Hey guys, this is Ashen Theory. In this series of videos, I'll be going over the entirety of how electricity works in Rust. Every component will be covered. I will explain all the inputs and outputs of each, and I'll show you how you can combine some to do some pretty amazing stuff. But let's start with the fundamentals. So in this circuit, I have a power source, going to a battery, going to a switch, and then I'm having that power do some stuff. Um, right now, it's, I'm having to do a couple lights. So, if you wanted to, let's say, let's unwire this, and you wanted this wire to be red, you just click on red, click where, it, where you want it, and as I click, you see how it goes down to 15 from 16, because that means you only have 15 more connections to do, and you see as I move the wire, my distance changes, saying I only have a max of 30 meters. As you click it on the uh, input, you see how the red wire now appears. Now, let's say you didn't want red wire, you wanted a uh, blue wire. Hold R, move over to your blue, go over to where your input is, and just tap R. That'll change that wire to blue. Now, one thing to realize in Rust with electrical is you, you can't click on an output it can only go to an input it can never go output to output show that it won't let me click on this but i can click even on this power in it has to go to the other kind reset that so that on now it's important to realize how the batteries work for us so right now you can see it has charge left active usage max output and capacity so active usage is how much rust watts you're using at a time or power usage. So if I go over to the build, let's say the switch, it's the timer switch. See how it says how much power this item requires a function? One. It, see it goes from 10, it'll say 10 right here. As it goes past, it'll go to nine. And that's why I have this counter to just kind of show these as the power goes away. So then it goes from nine to eight. This goes from eight to seven. So this is showing seven and seven, it will show six. Um, now let's say you're wiring something. Let's remove that and you don't like it. You want to just get rid of it. Just hold the right click down. That'll completely remove that wire. Um, so let's go to the next section and talk about more of the lengths. So I wanted to show this. So let's say you have this battery here and you want it to go to this component way over here. See how it says too far? That's because you're past that 30 meter limit. So the way to get around that is by adding another piece in the middle. So place this bar battery a little farther back, doing the exact same thing. I put an electrical branch in the middle. So now my power will go from nine, or yeah, from nine to eight. It's only showing less because of how the branch works. But that makes it so I can actually add another wire. I get another 30 feet to then connect to whatever else I want. I use this trick a lot um, just to extend my wires out if I have the right, enough uh, rust watts. So the next thing that I kind of want to get into is power generation. There's three things for power generation. Windmills, solar panels, and a gas generator. So starting with windmills, windmills are completely dependent upon how high they are off the ground. And now ground does not mean elevation with uh, respect to like mountains and stuff like that. It's respect to building height. So right now we're showing, this one's actually showing a lot at the moment, 92 rust watts are being made. And then if we go to this one a little bit over, it's showing 95 by going up one extra tile. Now, windmills will go up and down power throughout the day, so this number will change. But the whole big thing to uh, pay attention to is its average. And now, I like to go 10 uh, floors up to get at least 125 for my average. So right now, we're getting 139. So as it goes down, it might go down, say, to 90 throughout the day, but the average stays at above 125. But one issue, when you go up this high is let's say we're gonna unwire this 
and go straight down. Now it's too far. So we can use that last lesson of adding something else first to extend the wire. Now, one vulnerability is if they destroy this, they're gonna destroy your power generation. So I would hide your uh, root combiner somewhere inside your base where it's more safe and not on your actual pillar if you can help it. Next thing I wanna talk about is solar panels. So like how solar panels in real world, they need light in order to work. You can see how this one has 20 rust watts because it has sunlight. This one is not in the sunlight because of this wall. So it has nothing. So make sure that they have sunlight. There has been, a, I believe it's been patched where you could have actually built inside your wall. Um, but I'll look into that a little bit more later. So let's say we get rid of this wall. Now it's having power. Now you're getting your 20 rust, 20 watts. Uh, the other thing you can do is combine power sources. So right now, let's say you take this one uh, power or power solar panel, connect it to this other solar panel through a root combiner, and now we get 40 rust watts. So if you don't have access to a windmill, don't want to kind of show off your base that way, you can use multiple solar panels and get the same power generation through solar panels. You just have to add a lot of solar panels and root combiners. The last source of power generation is the gas generator. Now, most people will just run up, press the turn on button. Turn on. Oh, out of low grade. So you need low grade to uh, run gas generators. So now you can just turn it on. And now it's powering this, uh, this battery. Uh, power generator. It, it generates 40 power. So you can also turn it off. The other thing you can do, if you see it has three uh, inputs outputs. So it has your power out, it has a four stop, four start. So you can actually use something like a switch as long as it has power to force this on. You can also have a different button to turn it off. on the lights on. Now the only way that works is because I already have power going to it. So I'm if you remove this, put this on, it's not gonna turn on. So you need power to already go to this to do that force start for force start or stop. Next thing I want to get into is batteries. So a small battery gives 10 max power. A medium is 50 max power. A large is a hundred, but let's say you need more max power for some reason. You can actually use the root combiners themselves and combine two batteries and then output more power. So using two large batteries, you can get 200 rust watts instead if you want them on the same circuit. This concludes my rust electrical fundamentals guide. Please like and subscribe if you'd like to see more content. If there's something specific you'd like to see with the electricity, leave a comment below. Thanks. Bye.